Good to go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Golden Aris Colors. I'm Kevin Greeland, and today we're going to be taking a look at doing image transfers. So we'll cover the products that you need to do that, the types of materials, and what you can do an image transfer on. So let's go ahead and switch the overhead camera. So to do an image transfer, essentially we're talking about taking an image that's on a piece of paper and switching that image so that it appears on our painting surface. So here we've done a transfer of a bird onto this fiber paste. This one, image transfer onto canvas. So in the upper corner, we did the image transfer first onto the raw canvas, and then we applied some glass bead gel and some uh, high flow over top. So there are a lot of different products that you can use to do an image transfer. Um, here, we've done the transfer, and then we put some coarse molding paste on there because it has a nice tooth, so we've done some pastel work on top of that. So let's take a look at specifically how we do um, an image transfer and what do we mean by an image transfer. So the first thing is the image that you start with. So um, it needs to be a toner based um, print. So usually a commercial print if you go to any office supply store and get a print made there, um, that works very well as well as uh, older magazines. So uh, inkjet, uh, because it's water-based ink, doesn't work as well. You get a, a lot more of an ethereal look. The uh, ink tends to bleed because it gets wet. So here with a heat set uh, toner image through laser, this is the type of print that you want. So any print from an office supply store will work. You have two ways of transferring that image. We refer to them sometimes as direct or indirect. And what we mean by that is for the direct image, I've simply transferred this image from a piece of paper with a gel onto my surface, my painting surface. So that's considered direct because I'm transferring the image directly onto a board, all right? The indirect, we move that out. The indirect is where you take the image and you apply the gel to that image and you wind up with kind of an acrylic skin with that image embedded in the gel. And you can see on this one, I still have some more paper uh, to remove. When we looked at the uh, image transfer on the board, we were talking about using fiber paste. So this one, same image that we're working with here, but I just made a little stencil of fiber paste. The fiber paste is very flexible, feels a little bit like a piece of handmade paper. I used fluid matte medium and I brushed that on. I flipped my image over into the gel and I allowed that to dry. And then I have to remove the paper. And we're gonna be demonstrating all of these. I'm just walking you through the quick steps and then I would have to use a damp sponge and I would go ahead and remove this paper. All right, so a damp little kitchen sponge. And you can see as I start to wet that paper, you can see that the paper slowly starts to peel up and I'm left with just the image. I like these little kitchen sponges because they have this textured side and then of course the sponge side. The texture side, you can use that side to start with, to be a little aggressive and remove the paper. And then when you get close to seeing the printed image, like here where the tie is and the shirt and jacket, when I get close, I wanna switch and use the sponge side because if I scrub too hard, I can remove some of that pigment that's in the gel. So you start kind of aggressive with the sponge at first to remove the bulk of the paper, but then you switch to the other side of the sponge to remove some of that. Another way to do it is if you just dampen your finger, you can rub on there and slowly start to peel the paper away. You can see how it kind of rolls up there, but I like using the sponge, but either way you have to rub to scrub that. All right, so let's move that one aside. 
And besides using a gel or paste, you can actually use a, a paint product. So here we have um, iridescent bright gold. And again, as a direct transfer, I've just flipped my image over into the wet paint and allowed it to dry. As the, this one as a collage element, I flipped the image over into um, the wet paint, allowed it to dry. I still have some paper that I have to remove. If we look at this one, this one is the gold paint on this side. My image is in between, you know, the paint uh, if you, and then the gold. So I would have to, again, scrub this away. Once I scrub that away, I'm left with this image. Probably when you do most of these, you'll have to scrub at least once or twice. The first time is to remove the bulk of the paper. So the first time I'd go through, I'd have to remove the bulk of this paper. And then I'm left with a little bit of paper. So again, I just use that damp sponge. And you can see as I brush, you can see that paper starts to pool up there. So I, again, I just have to brush. This is on our iridescent bright gold, the fluid viscosity. And I just have to work at removing the rest of the paper. All right. So let's take a quick recap. We're doing an image transfer. And by that, I mean, we have a printed image that we're going to transfer onto our surface. I've already done that with this one. And in this case, I used our fluid matte medium. And this has now dried. This has our picture on. So again, I'm just going to use my sponge. I'm going to get that surface nice and wet. I can be fairly aggressive with that first layer to remove the excess. And you can see the image starting to come through. We just prep this board by painting it first with our heavy body paint. And then again, we use the fluid matte medium to transfer the image. And I just have to work at slowly removing that paper. And you can see the board's not completely wet. It really is just a damp sponge. You can see all the little bits of paper on there. When you get down close to the image, you can switch from the uh, abraded side of the sponge, or you can use your finger. And you slowly work at removing that paper. And just go around and kind of remove it. Once I have this first layer removed, I need to give it maybe five or 10 minutes to dry, and then I can go back and do a second removal to get a majority of the paper off. So let's sweep that out of the way. So besides doing the image transfers on a board or canvas or painting surface, you can also do it on fabric. So from our local Michaels, we picked up some canvas bags and some canvas aprons, and we're going to do image transfers onto those. So this is the canvas bag. You can see we've gone ahead and also did a little silk screening with our logo on there, but the same idea. I have my printed image. I've applied a gel and I have to flip that image over into that gel and then allow that paper to dry a little bit. And then I can use my damp sponge and go back and dampen that paper. And I can again be a little aggressive in removing that paper using the rough side of the sponge first. But then as I get that image revealed and I've removed most of the paper, I can switch to the sponge side and you can see that image starts to come through as I peel that paper away. You can also, again, if you don't wanna use a sponge, you can use your finger and you just slowly remove that paper. As I said before, you'll do this once, then allow it to dry and you'll probably have to repeat at least two or three times to get all of that paper off of there. There's a methyl cellulose in there, which is the glue that they use for paper. And so that's usually that kind of last sticky layer you have to get off of there. 
So again, just use your finger, take your time or a sponge, brush off the majority, allow it to dry. The other thing that I wanted to point out, here we're working with black and white images on the canvas tote. On the aprons that we picked up, um, we've also done a transfer on that one. Um, the thing that you'll notice between the bag is this is black and white, and this one is in color. So you can also do image transfers with color. So with the image that you're selecting, it could be a color copy, it could be a black and white, it could be a family photograph that you take and have a copy made of that photograph, it could be a drawing. The key is really going to a uh, laser printer and getting a laser image. So inkjet doesn't work quite as well. And I've had some limited success with soy inks too. All right, since we're talking about fabric and we've talked about doing it on a canvas apron and we've talked about doing it on a canvas bag, we'll also look at doing it on some other types of fabric. So let me move that out and bring this over. Um, these are fabric squares that we picked up at our local Michaels used for quilting. So you can do an image transfer on there as well. That was my ruler. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> That's the good thing about live events. Um, so here I've already done an image transfer, this one in color, and I've allowed it to dry. Um, this one is still, I did this morning, so it's mostly dry. And again, what you have to do is you have to kind of tear that paper away. Once you get the bulk of it torn away, you can use a sponge and wet that surface. Again, I use the rough side first to be aggressive to remove the bulk of it. And then I would just keep scrubbing. And eventually as I scrub all of that, I would wind up with my image. And this is the kind of the first pass at removing all of that paper. I'd come back, I still have some paper on there and that's that layer that I was talking about, that last layer with that methyl cellulose, the glue. So you just have to go back and work at using your finger and scrubbing. All right, let's take a look at the questions here. So I'll leave this. We can... Kevin, there was a question about the process itself. Were you going to step from the very beginning? <laughs> yeah, so then the next one we do, I'm going to lead us right through the, the process. So these were some dried examples. So the next one you're going to see, we're going to go right through the example. We're going to start using soft gel gloss. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so you have your fabric. And as I said, you can use almost any golden um, acrylic product. There are some caveats with certain products like the crackle paste, for example. But uh, here we're gonna use soft gel gloss. You can use fluid matte medium. As I demonstrated earlier, you could use paint. So the first thing that I'm going to do is apply my gel. So I've simply taped this piece of fabric down onto a piece of board to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't shift too much. And I'm going to place my gel on here. Depending on the fabric that you choose, you might want to do a little test first on a small piece. Um, but you can see here, this works perfectly fine. And this should work on almost all fabrics. Of course, it's going to change the texture of the fabric a little bit. I'm going to use soft gel gloss. The thing to keep in mind too with most of the gels is that they are either transparent or translucent when dry, but they're kind of like a milky wet uh, white when wet. So you can see this is kind of milky white. And I'm just going to place enough gel on there to do the transfer. Again, this is soft gel gloss. I've spread it out on here with a palette knife. And you can see right here, there's a little hole I'm pointing with my palette knife. So if I left that there, my transfer wouldn't be complete because that's what happened on this one. So you can see here's the little hole. If I put my image down and it doesn't make good contact with the gel, then this is what can happen. You won't have 
a complete transfer of your ink on that surface. Uh, the same here, but perfection is overrated. I kind of like that. So we have our gel down. You're gonna take your Xerox image uh, or laser printed image, just inkjet just doesn't work as well. So you want a commercial printer toner based image and you're going to flip that over into the gel. When you put that down, you can use a little squeegee or you can use your hand and you wanna work from the middle out. So I'm just gonna go up. And the reason that we're doing that is we wanna make sure that that image is making good contact with the gel. All right, so from the middle out, uh, the same if you were kind of doing a collage, you wanna make sure whatever you're gluing down there is you're getting those air bubbles out. So start from the middle, work out top to bottom, left to right. Uh, and then I would allow that to dry. Once that's dry, I can just like this one, I can go back and start removing that paper. Now in your studio, depending on the humidity um, and, and how long it takes something to dry, the more you practice at doing this, you can slowly start to peel up the paper while the gel is wet. Now this one, we would need to wait probably maybe 10 to 20 minutes. So before we close here, I will probably go back and pull that out. Okay, so we're gonna give this time to dry uh, and we'll see what state we're at. Um, it's raining very heavily today, so it's kind of humid in here. So I'm gonna hang on to that one um, and I'll show you some more examples. Kevin, we have another question. Yes, questions. Um, could you use a brayer to do that? You could use a brayer. Um, your hand works well, again, or a little squeegee, a brayer. The important thing is to start in the middle. If I used a a brayer on this one, again, I'd wanna start here in the middle. And the reason is if I start on the bottom, I'm gonna push product and air bubbles into that. So rather start in the middle and squeegee out or use a brayer and roll out, or you can just use your hand, start in the middle, again, left to right, jump to bottom, okay? What about if I get product like on the paper? So, so you definitely, what? Uh, definitely what you don't want to do is if I do this, if I press real heavy, you're going to see some product come out. So I don't want to go back and get this gel on there because what I'm doing is now creating kind of a sandwich and I'm gluing that paper uh, to the fabric, but I've also covered the back of it with product. So you want to try and avoid getting product on the back. All right. Using very thin paper? So you have to experiment. Um, most of the transfers work. It depends on the type of paper. I've done transfers onto uh, Mori paper and tissue paper. So it does work going thin. You just have to treat it real gentle. So I would say, again, the best way to figure out if your paper is going to work is do a little experiment first before you go to your um, final project. All right, so I'm gonna hang on to that one. We're gonna peel that off a little bit later. Um, so keeping with the idea of fabric, these two are done on canvas. So this is just unprimed, well, this side we prime, but this is just regular canvas, um, stretched canvas um, that we've not stretched and we've done the image on there. Again, we removed most of the paper the first time. So I can just go back and I continue scrubbing and removing that paper uh, off of there. Once I've done that, I could go ahead and paint on that surface. This is the colored image. Again, go back and kind of scrub all that excess paper off of there. And so you get the idea. So with um, the idea of doing the transfer onto fabric, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're doing a transfer onto um, a stretch canvas like this, one thing you have to keep in mind is flexing. And so I'm gonna hold up this canvas on an angle and I'm gonna press on that. And you can see how that canvas is moving. If you look along this side here, you can see where the canvas is kind of coming closer to the frame. So if you're trying to get an image on here and I'm flipping this over into a wet gel and I'm going like this, you can see that canvas is flexing, right? 
So because that canvas is flexing, I need to put something under there to support my transfer. Um, <clears throat> or I just have to be very careful. With smaller canvases like this size, it can be done easily. With larger canvases, it gets a little trickier. So uh, an old book or a piece of plywood or a piece of cardboard behind there gives you a little bit of support. So for that reason, I like using wood panels or canvas panels. Um, so on this one with the board, you can see there's really no flexing when I'm pushing that down on that surface because it's a hard board, unlike the canvas that's flexing. So it's just an extra challenge that you have to keep in mind. Um, so last time we used the soft gel gloss on the fabric. On this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use a fluid matte medium. So let me put a little fluid matte medium on here. And as I said, you can use a multitude of products. You can use a lot of the gels and paste, uh, and you can use paint. So uh, last time I used a palette knife for application. This time I'm just gonna use a brush. And I'm going to spread that gel out across the surface. All right. And I have my image here. Oh, I should have put down a piece of paper first. <laughs> so I don't make a mess of my work area. All right. Um, so I have my gel on here. And I'm going to take my image. This one's a color image. I'm going to flip that over. Um, and I'm using. Uh, a sheet protector here because it's clear and you can see. Normally I would use a piece of freezer paper or even a piece of paper for a palette uh, paper, but I'm using the um, clear sheet protector so you can see what happens. So when you do this, you wanna kind of measure the amount of product you have to your image. So I've put a lot of project uh, product on here. Again, I'm gonna start from the middle and squeegee out, but hopefully you get to see all that excess product, see that's being smushed out there, bleeding over the side? So that's the part that you need to be careful about because you don't want that product getting on the back because then really what you're doing is sealing the whole thing in. So uh, let me do this here so you can kind of see this last side. So if I press real heavy, I'm squishing all that extra product out there. So it's not that, uh, you can put on too much product. It's just that you don't want that product to flip around and be on the reverse side. So you can see on my sheet protector how much excess is on there. And that can pose a problem to you when you're trying to do a nice neat transfer. So really kind of consider the volume of product that you're putting on there to your transfer. All right. So pass the cable, uh, pass the canvas, pass the uh, hardboard, you can also do wood panels. And uh, I picked up, uh, we picked up a couple of wood panels from our local Michaels. So this is kind of a, a round uh, piece of wood. Uh, again, we picked this one up at the local Michaels. Um, now I could paint this surface. If I wanted to paint this, I could paint it first and then do my image transfer. Uh, this one has a little frame around the outside. So uh, I'll demonstrate on this one, we're gonna, because I like the idea of the wood, so we're gonna use gloss medium. And again, you'll see all, like our other gels, uh, this is kind of a milky white when wet, but um, as it dries, it will dry transparent. So I'm just gonna use a brush, and I'm gonna spread that out over my, panel and I kind of like to go both directions you know I'll go what would you say vertical and then horizontal just to make sure that I've covered everything thoroughly all right and then I have my image here so again I'm going to flip that over and put that into my gel and I want to, again, from the middle, I want to work my way out and just push up, making sure that that paper is coming in contact with the product. And depending on the type of copy paper you're using, you'll see that very quickly, 
um, the paper can start to bubble. So you don't want to allow a lot of time as the moisture gets pulled into that paper, you'll get some wrinkling and that also causes uh, a few little defects in your transfer. So once you put the product on there and you lay the paper down, you'll want to quickly kind of work from the middle out to get those air bubbles out. All right, so that one's on a wood panel. We're gonna also leave that one to sit uh, and hopefully towards the end, we'll be able to peel some of that off and you can see that. All right. Um, this one, as I said, we could just as easily paint this. Uh, same idea, doing a transfer on there. I could use the gloss medium again, or I could use soft gel. On this one, I might consider um, something like the pastel ground. Um, the pastel ground, when applied very thinly, can be almost transparent. Um, so you can see that fairly transparent, but it has, as its name indicates, um, it's for pastels. Um, it's great for colored pencils, chalk pastel or oil pastel. So I'm going to apply a thin coat over my surface because I wanna do some colored pencil on this after it's done with the transfer part. So when you feel like you have that pretty smooth and consistent across the surface, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna use that squeegee again. You just wanna make sure that you have a product everywhere so that the surface is covered. I'm just going to take my image and flip that over. And then again, fairly quickly, I'm going to just press from the middle out. I wanna get good contact with my paper and I wanna work out any air bubbles, make sure that that product is touching uh, all of that ink that's on that piece of paper. And again, we'll leave that one set up and I'll remove the paper or we'll try to at the end. The other thing um, is also working on plexiglass. So let me switch this out. And I'll put down a clean piece. So this is on a piece of plexiglass. We picked, um, I bought a little picture frame at Michael's as well. Um, and I took this piece of plastic out that was in the picture frame. Um, so if you're thinking about doing collage or mixed media work, you can incorporate you know, an image transfer with a photograph. Um, all of these acrylic products, um, if, if this is acrylic, you'll get um, this pro the transfer medium that you're using, whether it's soft gel gloss or fluid matte medium, you'll get it to bond to these surfaces. Um, this was a little clipboard that we picked up again from Michaels as well. Then I can do a transfer on there. So let me demonstrate that process. Uh, here, I've already done it and I've done it with the fluid matte medium. And that's what created this little bit of a haze is the matting solids in the fluid matte medium. On the back, I used a little bit of our nickel azo um, yellow high flow just to do a little bit of a wash. So this is the back side and this is the front side. It doesn't really matter. It's just that this side is the glossy side because the acrylic is glossy and this is the matte medium. All right, so because I use the fluid matte medium on this one, I'm gonna use gloss medium on the other one. So let me put that there. I'm gonna do the gloss medium. All right, so let's uh, take this off. Again, I think that, you know, we picked these uh, clear pieces of acrylic up at the local Michaels. Um, different shapes and different sizes. So I have my paper pretty much cut. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this. This is the gloss medium. I'm gonna pour a little bit of that out on here. And I wanna make sure that my surface is clean. We're gonna just brush that out. You kinda wanna cover you know, the whole surface the thing when this is dry, you will notice on the acrylic one, 
that, <coughs> excuse me, you'll notice on this one uh, where the product stopped. So if I wanted to make this cohesive, I could simply brush more of the fluid matte medium. So the same on this one, depending where I put the product, once it's dry, I may go back. So that it looks like a uniform surface, but I have that area covered with my gloss medium. I'm going to put this image on. And again, as soon as I have that paper down, I want to kind of work out any air bubbles and make sure that we have good contact with the product that's under there. And again, that one I'm gonna lay aside, give it a few minutes to dry, and then we'll take a look at it towards the end. So that's doing it on a piece of plexiglass. Um, these are um, fairly inexpensive from the Home Depot store. This one was from Michael's. Um, this one was the picture frame. So same idea. I think because I'm working with pictures, I would probably stick with gloss. But uh, just to show you the versatility, this one we're going to do with the matte medium. And I'm going to pour a little bit again on here. Now, because this is a matte product, it has a little bit of silica in there, it's a matting agent. So it is going to go from shiny to a little bit of a haze, but depending on your application and what you want to do, that could be totally cool. All right, so brush this out. Again, you kind of want to cover the whole surface, make sure you're having good contact. And put the lid on there and I'm gonna take my image uh, and I'm going to flip this over. So you'll notice when we're doing all of these, so far we've been flipping them. I'll demonstrate making skins. But another thing to keep in mind is you can see here, for me, the eyes are looking to the right. When I flip this over, you're working mirror image. So the eyes will now be looking to the left. So keep that in mind if you're working with text, you'll want to select mirror image on the copier or tell the person who's making your copies that you need to do mirror image. Otherwise, all your words will be backwards. So again, same idea that we've already done. Put the product on, flip the image over in the middle, sweep out to get the product evenly distributed. And again, we'll just give that a few minutes to dry along with our other plexiglass one. All right, so I'm gonna switch these out and we'll talk about some of our different materials. So, uh, so far we've used uh, soft gel gloss, we've used the matte medium, we've used the gloss medium, and we used the fluid matte medium. The other thing is you can use paint as I indicated when I showed you the gold. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is, you know, which one you like working with and the substrate that you're working on. Um, some people also like to use regular gel. There's really no right or wrong with most of the products. You just have to experiment a little. Um, we also did the pastel ground, which is this one. But you could easily do something like fiber paste or a regular gel. It's just the viscosity that you're working with kind of changes a little bit. So you got to figure out what's working for your particular application. Some that can be a little more challenging would be like our crackle paste. And I can show you on this one, when we did this transfer with the crackle paste here, we did the transfer onto the canvas first, and then I applied the crackle paste, allowed it to dry went over it with a little bit of a wash using high flow. But on top of that, I had to put some matte medium because these little cells, if you don't kind of glue them down, can pop off. So because this canvas flexes, right, those little cells could pop off of there. So <clears throat> you can use almost all the products. This is each one comes with its own little caveat about what you may have to do. So on this one, Yes, I used the crackle paste, but I had to seal it down with a little matte medium so it doesn't pop off of there. All right. Another fun one uh, that I like is both of these 
um, where the acrylic skins and we did them with soft gel gloss. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how to do an acrylic skin and what we mean by that. So we'll need a sheet protector. So I like working with these sheet protectors just because the acrylics don't stick to them. Um, and they make a nice releasable surface. And again, you can get these at most copy stores or office supply stores. Um, the gloss, um, just because it's kind of clean and shiny, um, you can work with that. So when you make these skins, once you have this dried and you have the image in there, you can pretty much cut and shape this and glue it onto your canvas however you want it. Um, and you would use maybe the same product to, to glue it down. So I might use the soft gel gloss if I can find it here. <laughs> yes, here we go. Uh, my soft gel gloss. I would use the soft gel gloss to glue this to my canvas as well. Again, keep in mind, it's kind of a milky white when wet, but as it dries, it's going to go transparent, okay? Uh, so to make the skin, I'm simply taking my image and I'm laying it on top of my sheet protector here. Um, use a fairly clean palette knife. And the reason I say clean is if you have one that's real dirty, like this one has a lot of product on the back that is dried. Um, if you do that, it's gonna create drag across there. So clean palette knife works better. So you don't have any dried or old product on there. All right, uh, we're gonna use the soft gel gloss. And I'm just gonna scoop some out. And what I'm gonna do is put it at the bottom of my image. Again, depending on the thickness, this is just regular copy paper. That paper is gonna start pulling up that moisture real quick. So you'll want to work fairly fast because you'll get a lot of bubbles. So I put the product on the bottom because I like working away from me. Um, so to make this acrylic skin, all I'm gonna do is now spread that product out across that surface. And I wanna do that pretty quickly because hopefully you can see that this uh, it, paper is starting to uh, absorb that moisture and it's starting to wrinkle. So you can see that right across there, hopefully you can see those little waves starting to appear. Um, and so as this gel sinks into that paper, that paper is gonna get wavier. So I find that uh, heavier bond paper works a little bit better. Most copiers, I think it's between 18 and 20 pounds of paper. If you could do 22 or 24, you don't get as much wrinkling. So that is something to consider what you're having your image printed on. But the more you do these, the better you get, and you can, you'll move past that, and it won't be as much of a hindrance. Um, so what I would do with this soft gel gloss is allow this to completely dry. And again, milky white when wet, but as it dries, you wind up with this. And so this is a uh, soft gel gloss, and you can see there's an edge there to that hopefully on the camera. Uh, what I'm gonna do is scrub some of the paper away on the back of this, but you'll wind up with something that looks like this, um, it, which is a clear skin. And it doesn't really matter. It was created this way, but I could just as easily use it this way, right? So um, I could paint the back of this. Um, I could do a wash on it, and then I can glue this onto my surface uh, on my canvas that I'm painting. What would I use to glue it on there with? I'd probably use the same thing that I used to create this with, which is the soft gel gloss. I like this just as an easy overall product for transfer, as well as collaging or gluing. Um, but if you don't have the soft uh, gel gloss, you could use one of our matte mediums. You could use regular gel. Um, this product, the process works with a lot of different products. So let's take a look at scrubbing off some paper from this one, just so you can kind of see uh, what that would look like. Again, um, we're working with just a little bit of water and a damp sponge. I'll put that on here. Um, and I'm going to turn this over. Let me soak the paper so you can see on this side. 
So you can see, you know, here's where the gel stops because you can see quickly how um, much the paper tears away there as soon as you get it wet. Um, but generally I work from the back and you're just gonna dampen that surface and just give it a minute or two. Uh, we'll wait and you can see that the, you know, water starts pulling into that paper. Um, so you just, you know, flood that surface with a little bit of water with your sponge and allow it to kind of soak in. And so you can see the image starting to come through that paper. And then really the hard part is, you know, really kind of removing this. Most of the paper that's not attached to the gel, you can just kind of pinch away with your fingers. Uh, again, I like using the little sponges. It saves on the fingertips. Uh, and then this is the part where you can be fairly aggressive and you start scrubbing. And eventually that paper starts coming away. You'll see that the uh, paper, the water turns a little milky white too. And that's from the methyl cellulose that's in the paper. It's not the gel um, coming apart just because you're using water or something. It's just the glue um, when it gets wet from the paper, the methyl cellulose kind of turns that milky white color. So you can see I'm removing my fiber and eventually my image starts to show. I would continue to do that over the whole surface. And again, here we're doing a black and white image, but you can just as easily, let me move that away. You can just as easily do it, you know, with a colored image as well. Um, and again, doesn't matter, you know, left or right, how you want to do these once you create the skins. Uh, another fun one, this one, I still have more paper to remove. This is the glass bead one. So all of the paper along those edges, I still have to work at getting off. Um, but you can see the glass bead. You can really see the texture on this side. And this was the side that's up. And then this was the side that the paper made contact with. Uh, still some scrubbing and cleaning to do. Um, but I love doing image transfers with the glass bead gel. Um, let me go ahead and demo. I have two more. I just thought to show you these with the glass bead gel. Um, two different images. This one is the black and white image that we done. And then this is the color one. And so this one, again, prepped these this morning. So they're still a little bit wet, but I, same idea as we've done before with the glass bead gel, you just have to use a damp sponge and um, wet that surface and then start scrubbing, start scrubbing that paper away. Um, the one thing that you'll notice, um, depending if you put too much um, water on there, um, this glass bead gel, we just did it this morning and so, you want it to get to a stage where it's um, dry and virtually transparent. It's just the glass bead gel has a little bit of a green blue haze to it. Um, but you'll notice if you get the uh, too wet again, the product gets a little milky. And so you just need to give it a few minutes to dry uh, in between and that milkiness goes away. Eventually uh, all that cloudiness disappears and you're left just with the image. Um, here, well, let's take a look at some of the ones that we started with and see where we're at. So this one was on the canvas board and it has a piece of paper on there. And I'm gonna just slowly pull that back. And so here you can see, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Depending on um, your conditions in your studio, you know, drawing time. Um, this one we did, you know, maybe 20 minutes ago. And you can see, I can start to pull that first layer of paper away, All right? So even you don't have to wait overnight for this to dry, you can start removing some of that carefully while it's wet. Um, and I can even use a little water and sponge. So you can see on this one, which we did about 20 minutes ago, I'm peeling that first layer of paper away, right? So that's the first layer, but there's still this second layer of paper that I have to remove. Even while it's wet, I can go back and use a damp sponge and I can start really 
removing more of that paper. But remember this gel is um, wet by like 20 minutes. So we wanna be careful and not oversaturate the gel. So typically um, when you first start, you might wanna allow them time to dry overnight. When you do your first ones, just let them dry overnight and then remove the paper the next day. But the more you become uh, accustomed to doing a transfer, uh, you can start removing the paper while it's wet. Um, and I like, um, you know, for the instant removals, um, I tend to use the fluid matte medium or the matte medium for this style when I'm pulling away. The gels, because they're a little thicker, they can take longer. So it just depends, again, what you're accustomed to working with. Let me get the acrylic one and show you the difference. So this acrylic one, uh, a couple of things to keep in mind is that surface that you're working on. So this is kind of absorbent. Um, it, it has a, a coating of gesso on there, but it's still fairly absorbent, pulling some of that moisture in, allowing for evaporation. Uh, the canvas has pores. Um, the acrylic, you know, doesn't really have any pores. So the evaporation on this one takes a little bit longer because it's only going one direction. But we can take a look. Uh, if you have an edge there, and I can start pulling that up. And so this one has dried pretty well too. Um, you can see when I was talking about all the wrinkling that can happen. So here's the wrinkling that happened to the paper. And we can go ahead and pull that up and reveal that image. Again, this is sitting maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So um, depending on your individual circumstances um, in your studio, um, you just work at pulling that off carefully. If I was pulling this up on this edge here, if I pulled this up and the image or the gel came up with it, then I would need to stop and give it another five or 10 minutes um, before I pulled it off. But this one looks pretty good. So we're gonna pull that primary layer off. And again, this was the gloss medium on this one that we used. So I just work at pulling all that paper off. Again, keeping in mind that that gel is wet, I may not want to introduce too much water, but a little bit. Again, if I go back and dampen that, the trick is because we just applied this gel, you don't wanna to get too much water on there. So this one's still a little, a little sensitive, I would say. Um, so keep the sponge real damp, but you can see how that paper starts peeling off of there. So because this is on acrylic, I would probably need to give this another maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So maybe right before we close, we'll take another look at that one. Let's put the wood under there and take a look at this wood one. Now the wood also fairly absorbent. On this one, we use the uh, pastel ground. And so on here, I'm gonna pull this up. You can see right here, See the product and the image is pulling up. So this one definitely needs, you know, maybe another 10 minutes. Um, I could fuss with it and try little areas, but you know, it's always a gamble. So um, rather than pulling, you know, we'll, I'll reveal. So as you can see how this first layer is coming up um, and that image is underneath there. But here you can see the gel, see that? Right here, the gel pulled away. So if you pull this up, like I did here, and I noticed that the gel's starting to come up and the image is starting to come up, just stop and give it another 10 minutes um, to dry and then check it again. Otherwise, you risk this happening where, you're, where the gel is still wet, bonded to the paper, but as you pull it up, you're pulling the gel and your image with it. So this um, overall, probably not so great, um, but, depending on what you're gonna do, it may not matter if I'm putting some paint or something on there, all right? So the last one then, I think this was the first one we did with the fabric. So I'm gonna hang on to the wood panel and give that a few minutes. Um, and then we'll look at the acrylic one too. On this one, we did this one first. And I think we used the soft gel again on this one. Um, so let's, I'm gonna start at a corner that I think is dry. We're gonna peel that up. All right, that one's looking pretty good. But again, I think probably another, 
Yeah, so you can see it's starting to pull up the gel there with that. So let me put that there. So it's starting to pull up the gel here. So that means the gel's not dry. So again, I need to give this another 10 minutes. So it is kind of a patience game, um, or you just simply let them to dry overnight like we did the glass bead. This one we did yesterday, let it dry. And then the paper's nice and dry, the product's nice and dry. We can go ahead, put some water on there and get that nice and wet. And then we can go back and really start scrubbing. Uh, again, we can be a lot more aggressive because this has had all night to dry. I would just simply work at removing that paper and you can kind of see the image starting to come through. And I would just have to keep scrubbing and removing paper. These that were wet, we, we need to give them another 10 minutes. The same with the wood panel. So always wait, um, just double check those edges. So let me pull out my first canvas that I started with and we'll go over that. And then we'll end with some questions and answers. Uh, so image transfer, essentially the main things that you need to remember is you wanna work with an image that is um, toner-based um, laser printer. Uh, inkjet, because it's water-based pigment, when they get wet, you can see from this one, imagine if this was inkjet and this is still wet, a lot of your clean, crisp lines are gonna diffuse into that gel. So uh, you get a much more ethereal look. Um, but if that's something you're after, you can try that. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is I've had limited success with soy, so that's a possibility. So laser works the best. Um, to do the transfer, you're simply taking your image and flipping it over onto your surface. So here, this is the surface we're talking about. It's fiber paste. I had a picture of a bird. I flipped it over into the gel, allowed it to dry, scrubbed the paper away. The same on this one. We just applied a lot of different products. Here we have glass bead gel. We put that on and then we did a little wash of high flow over top. On this particular one, we used the coarse molding paste. And I have that somewhere to show you. Ah, here it is. So we use the coarse molding paste. Again, this is a opaque white paste. In thick applications, it is opaque but very thin. You can see I've applied this really thin. I can still see my image through there, even though it's very thin, but it gives me a nice toothy surface to do pen, uh, pan pastel work on or colored pencil. Um, the same here, we use the pastel ground. That's the one that we put on our wood panel. So the pastel ground is a ground that's designed for pastel work. Uh, it's a texture a, acrylic primer, and I put it on here. We're going to give that one some time to dry because I know that I want to go back and use some colored pencil or chalk pastel there. All right. So, uh, again, you just have to kind of figure out what you want to do with your image, whether you're going to do paint or uh, a wash, or you're going to use some chalk or oil pastels. Um, the, the material that you do the transfer with just depends on really what type of image you're trying to create. All right, so that brings us almost to the end here. Let me see how we're doing with our acrylic. I'll pull that out. And let me see if there's any questions. Can you use regular <laughs> molding paste um, or is the opacity an issue? So you can do a transfer into molding paste um, and that would work perfectly. Um, if you put the molding paste on, um, just like the course, you'll wanna go real thin because the molding paste uh, is a lot more opaque. Um, so it's certainly possible, but you need to do a couple of little experiments with. Uh, let me take any more questions here, make sure I covered anything. Yeah, so almost any acrylic product will work. Um, if you're in doubt you, and it's a golden product, um, you can always go ahead and email us at help at goldenpaints.com.
If you create something using a transfer from this video, you can also hashtag us at um, share at golden, um, or you can do hashtag golden paints. So if you have any questions, email us at help at golden paints. Hopefully you learned something about image transfer. Thanks for watching.